everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 50 most influential Latinos of Georgia. I am so proud to be up here today for what I feel is a family reunion, right? My name is Veronica Maldonado Torres, your president and CEO of the Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So I'm about 60 days into the new job, and I don't know if you've noticed, but we've hit the ground running. Uh, we have been across the state in Columbus. Where are my friends from Columbus at? All right, okay, they're, they're here, they're here. Thank you, thank you. We've been in Columbus, we've been having conversations in Macon, Savannah, Augusta, and of course, Metro Atlanta. But I'm so honored that we have a chance now to really put Georgia on the map. And I think it's been on the map, but now we're really gonna be focusing on increasing access, opportunity, and uh, cultivating the next of leaders here and businesses across the state. So thank you for the honor and the pleasure of serving as your president and CEO. Tu cámara está aquí para ti. We're here to celebrate the Hall of Fame inductees that will be uh, shared here tonight, our 50 most influential leaders that have been paving and trailblazing and being game changers. We're here to celebrate the opportunity to come together after a time of great seclusion. And we're gonna do that responsibly. So I hope you took the time to put on your name tag if you feel comfortable with a hug, if you feel comfortable with an elbow bump, or if you just need a little bit of space. We respect that here today. And thank you for showing up as you are. Uh, I wanna take a moment before we get this party started because again, I feel it's a party. We haven't seen each other in a while. It's our first signature event together in 2021. And we are activating in new ways uh, for the rest of the year. But I wanna take a moment and celebrate these experiences don't happen without the support of our members, of our sponsors, of folks that truly believe in the mission of the Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And our mission is to ensure that we are creating economic developments domestically and internationally and serving as the conduit and the bridge to our non-Hispanic entities. In a time of diversity, equity, and inclusion, Latinos are here, we are growing, and we are fostering new opportunities, and we are extending our hands with all of those who want to engage with us. So muchas gracias to all of those that have been supporting the GHCC, and for those who will continue to support the GHCC moving forward. I want to say a special thank you to Truist. Muchas gracias, Truist. Melanie and your team. We're being hosted by the Atlanta Braves. Thank you, Derek, and your team. To our media sponsors, Telemundo, Precise, SN, and Diego, who is taking our photography today. Thank you to our silver sponsors, Alpha Graphics in Dunwoody Sandy Springs and Tri-Cities Atlanta Airport, Delta Airlines, and DS Foods. And our bronze sponsors, 100 Black Men, Amigo Insurance, Gladiators, Chef Joel, give it up for the food. Authentic Cuban, muchas gracias, Chef. Cruz and Associates, Galeo, Grady, cheer. This is the moment to cheer for sure. H3 Media, Interactive College of Technology, Rude Hill. All right. Ser Familia, Urbina Law, TRC, Up Advertising, and Vergas Law. Thank you, thank you. And of course, we cannot forget one of our newcomers this year, Office Depot. Muchas gracias, Office Depot. We will hear about the work they've been helping us do today. Well, without further ado, I want to welcome up to the stage to greet you in his house, 
Mr. Derek Schiller, President and CEO of the Atlanta Braves. El pitcher viene Alvis bajando, tira para primera, out en la inicial, que jugada de rompe y rasga de Ozzy Alvis. Al guante de Alvis. Así es que línea la segunda. Thank you very much. Um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I'm here on behalf of our 500 employees and our entire team to welcome you here. Bienvenidos. Thank you very much for being at Truist Park. We join our partners in Truist in hosting this event. This is the fourth time that we have uh, been in partnership. Fourth year in a row we've been in partnership with the Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. This has been an event that we obviously cherish. We're so glad that you're here today in person. Um, and we welcome you to Truist Park, home of the first place Atlanta Braves. <laughs> uh, I, I'm saying that now because it's a little tight and it's a little competitive down the stretch. We look forward to your support during the, the last month of, of this season. You know, this has, uh, as, as noted, this has been a challenging year in a lot of ways, challenging year and a half, two years in a lot of ways. Uh, one of the things that we've done that I want to point out is that we have um, served a lot of meals out into the community as part of our home plate project. We've joined with Delaware North, who's helping to serve today's meal in providing about two million meals to primarily Latino and African American communities in throughout Georgia, throughout the metro Atlanta area. So um, that work is going to continue. We really appreciate all of you who have joined in our efforts to do that. That's something that's extremely important to us. Uh, obviously, this partnership means a lot. We've, uh, we've been celebrating a version of the Braves called Los Bravos now for a few years. And we actually have a night coming up, September 10th, that is a partnership and celebration specifically of our Los Bravos partnership. I hope you all can join us that Friday night as we bring in uh, the Los Bravos name into our field and, and on our jerseys, et cetera. That will be a fun night for us, as it always is. But today is obviously mostly about you honorees that are part of the 50 uh, most and bestest uh, influential Latinos in uh, Georgia. So I want to take uh, a bit of time just to say thank you and congratulations for all, you wor all the work that you do in the community, especially this very challenging year. So I think this is obviously a, a, a year that is, uh, rewards those people in ways that's uh, very different and important in that regard. So uh, on behalf of the Braves, once again, I want to thank you for being here. I hope you have a great program. And congratulations again to all you honorees. Thank you. This time, I would like for us to recognize our Hall of Fame um, in, uh, folks that are, are already in our Hall of Fame here tonight, today before we introduce our new Hall of Fame group. These folks are game changers, trailblazers. They have led us to where we are today, and uh, we're so grateful that they have paved that path for us. If you are a Hall of Famer, please take a moment to stand so that you can be recognized amongst your familia. Yeah. Judge Dax Lopez, thank you. Rudy Becerra. Mimi Woodson, thank you. Gigi Pedraza. Thank you so much, Pedro Marin. Monica Maldonado. I think I got everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. And, uh, you know, this year was a tough year to select our, our inductees. It was challenging, to say the least. Um, but we obviously took consideration and made sure that we brought our board of directors in and past Hall of Fame inductees to bring this new level of leadership into this hall. Um, I'd like to thank you in the name of our future and current generations for your tireless years of service. And just hearing from some of them earlier today, 
The stories are so deep, we don't even see what they have really done for us. But we're going to honor them today. And I hope that you take the time to look at their bios and that you read through what they have done for our community and really spend time thinking about what is my legacy going to be? What is my legacy? I hope that that is the inspiration that is brought in that thought for you today as we meet our inductees and our 50 mil. We are truly a stronger community because of you. I wanna invite up here and we're gonna, because we're in COVID times, we want to uh, announce the uh, Hall of Famer to come up, uh, take your award, take a picture, and then come back down to your seat, all right? So at this time, I want to recognize a ultimate power couple, true trailblazers who when faced with a lack of couple support and group programs for Latinos in their community made it their mission to help others and create it. Miguel and Belisa Urbina, born in Puerto Rico, uh, leading and founding Ser Familia, which is the leading nonprofit in Georgia, providing coordinated multidisciplinary family, social, and mental health services to Latinos. This program started as a couples ministry in Marietta and has grown rapidly to become a strong and effective organization that serves more than 5,000 clients a year. Ser Familia goes deep with each family it serves, providing a multitude of support that positively and decisively changes the lives of their clients. I had the chance to speak with Belisa and Miguel earlier and sharing how they've had so much work during this pandemic. Thank you, Belisa and Miguel. Please come up to accept your Hall of Fame award and share with us some words today. Give them a round of applause, please. Um. Thank you so much uh, to the Georgia Hispanic Chamber for this honor. Um, thank you to our God Almighty, who has us here, who has guided us, who placed us in Georgia to do the work that we do. Thank you to our children. We would never have done any of this without your support and your involvement. To our board of directors, the executive uh, committee is here. Thank you for all you do for this project and our staff that works hand in hand with us. If we want our children, our Latino children, to achieve all of the dreams we have for them, and I say this every time, we have to create healthy homes, safe homes for them. During the pandemic, we have seen a 112% increase in cases of domestic violence and 231% increase of Latino children being sexually abused. We have a crisis in our communities. Our young people have three times the possibility of suffering from severe depression, anxiety, or attempting suicide when compared to anybody else in the United States. We cannot achieve all the dreams we have for them unless we work in the families. Thank you for helping us amplify this message and to all of you for supporting our work. And up next, a man who day or night, rain or shine, and even with a mask on, always has a huge smile on his face. A true servant leader whose favorite word seems to be yes, because he is always willing and makes himself available to anyone who approaches him. Ivan Shamas is general manager for Telemundo Atlanta a premier Spanish language station providing award-winning local news and programming to the expansive Latinx population in Atlanta. He's worked with the media and within the Atlanta Hispanic community for well over four, 20 years. I almost added extra, sorry, 20 years. Shama serves on the board of the directors for the JCC. He served as the past board chair, is the current chair of governance committee, and recently led the search for the new CEO. Shamas is also currently serving on the board of directors of the Atlanta Community Food Bank and was honored in 2021 for the second year in a row as one of Georgia's 100 most influential people by Georgia Trend Magazine. Congratulations, Ivan. Come on up. 
and give us your one to two minutes. Let's welcome Ivan to the stage. Oh my God, this is special. This is extremely special. I'm going to take this off for one second. Ya me dijeron que tengo dos minutos. Bueno, vamos a ver. This is awesome, and I'll tell you why this is so cool, because everybody in this room is family, and that's what makes us so special. This is who we have leaned on. This is who we've gone to for advice. This is who we've cried to. This is who has encouraged us. This is who has helped us excel in our careers, and I want everybody to remember that as the new generation comes up. This is our responsibility. We want to pull each other up. We want to support each other. Change is inevitable. We have seen that over the past two years. COVID happened. Our personal lives have been affected. Our professional lives, our careers have changed. But one thing that is constant is this rock, this group, this family. We have always been there. We will continue to be there for each other. I want to almost thank, there's so many people in this room that have influenced my world. And I'm only going to name a few real quick. Over 20 years ago, I, I was just about to graduate Georgia State University, and I hear that Comcast is looking for a Spanish, a sales rep, and the only qualification was to be bilingual. I'm like, all right, I think I can do that. You know, I can, I can interview for that. This is, Ricky Martin had just sung Ale 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 at the World Cup. General Market did not know who Shakira was. We hadn't even heard of Gasolina. Soccer wasn't even popular in the United States yet. So I go and I interview with a gentleman named Jorge Gomez. It was exciting. I was going to be able to sell Univision, Telemundo, Galavision, Fox Sports, Fox Sports Español. And I get the job. And I was just sitting with him today thanking him because it totally propelled the direction of my career, my personal life, my professional life. So gracias, Jorge Gomez, for everything you've done, hermano. There's so many people in this room that have influenced me. I look at Rudy Becerra, who was a past honoree over here. When, when my job had transitioned um, and downsized, I, I run into Rudy. He's like, why don't you come up to my office? And I'm in my 30s thinking, man, this VP is inviting me up to Coca-Cola to his office. This is great. I come to his office. You know, I mean, the awards are amazing. Pictures with Ronald Reagan because he was at the table when Hispanic Heritage Month was signed into law with the president because of his influence. And he tells me, Ivan... He, he, he starts making calls. He says, here's what we can do. Let's look at everything. He puts me on a committee. As I'm leaving the room, he asks me, is there anything I can do for you? I'm thinking, man, you've already done a lot. So, uh, but I remember that, and that resonated. Called my dad from the car. I'm like, the senior vice president of Latin Affairs just asked me if there was anything he could do for me. And I want that to be the message and the theme for all of us. We will continue to support each other. Gracias to this. Gracias, Veronica. Your vision, this is refreshing what's happening. And gracias, Antonio, for what you're putting together over here. My time is up. We will see you guys later. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, please let me know. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so full of joy up here just thinking about the power of relationship and giving back and lifting up. Thank you to everyone here who spends time sowing seeds into the next. Well, we have another one, another Hall of Famer coming up. This person led the UPS Foundation, the Global Citizenship Program and Initiatives for UPS as president. He was responsible for the operations and management of its global philanthropic employee engagement and corporate relation program, which in 2019 invested in over 4,300 organizations and communities across 170 countries. In addition to that immense responsibility, he served as the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer with responsibility to advance diversity and inclusion programs which empower over half a million UPS employees worldwide, including its suppliers, customers, and communities at the company. There could be no better person than him to lead that effort back then, and he was and is a trailblazer who joined UPS in 1976 as a package handler in UPS's South Florida operations. And uh, as we can see, he has led an illustrious career. In addition to those corporate responsibilities, he served as a former chairperson of the World Economic Forum, uh, Global Agenda Council on Humanitarian Responses, the UN Global Logistics, 
and so much more. Please help me welcome and honor today, Ed Martinez. Thank you, Veronica. Buenas tardes, amigos y familia. It truly is an honor to receive this award. I want to first congratulate the top 50 that are be honored today as well, and my fellow honorees and inductees today, and past, present, and of course, the future honorees. You know, today is a very special day for me because this award really reflects collaboration doesn't reflect anything that I did individually. It really reflects the work that I've done with many of you, with my brothers and sisters at the UPS Foundation in UPS, with GHTC, and of course, my most important collaboration of all, which is with my wife of 43 years, Ileana Martinez. So I want to thank Veronica and I also want to recognize Veronica because she's taken this organization at a very challenging time in our history and taking it to the next level with a new vision. And I want to thank all of you for being here and showing her and her staff and her team that we're right behind you all the way. So I want to say that there's a lot of work to do, and I'm going to be there elbow to elbow with the GHCC as one of the most important organizations in Georgia that brings together such key leaders that we have in this room and how important that is to lift, to lift the community, to lift Latina entrepreneurs here in Georgia and as they spread all over the world. So thank you. Thanks all of you. And up next, leaders stand out by the nature of their commitment and the integrity of their character, our next awardee is one of the most incredible, hardworking, and compassionate people I've had the pleasure of knowing. She is the anchor, writer, and producer of the award-winning regional news magazine Conexión Fin de Semana in Atlanta, Philadelphia, and North Carolina. She implements the corporate responsibility platforms of the company under the property Univision Contigo. Mariela Romero has received 27 Emmy Awards from the Academy of Television Arts, Southeast Region, recognized by Olga C. Goizuera in 2019. And in 2020, she joined the National Juvenile Defender Center Boards and the Congressional Hispanic Leadership Institute in Washington, DC. Please help me welcome Mariela Romero. my signature thing, right? Crying. And um, thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Adriana. Adriana was my intern at Univision, and she was pregnant. Now her son is seven, and my son has graduated college. But I don't have any more wrinkles, right? I look exactly the same. <laughs> so um, speaking, all our, everybody here, the, my fellow inductees, Wonderful, Ivan Shamas, Jorge Gomez. We worked together when I started at Univision. <laughs> I hadn't seen my boss in 17 years, Eddie Elguezabal. Where are you, Eddie? Over here. And he's one of the most influential. Thank you. Thank you for being an example of leadership, all of you. But when I was thinking about what, I want, what do I want to say today, you know, I'm not the same Mariela that, was, um, that you knew in 2020, in March of 2020. I am a different person. And I know that all of you have been changed in, tremendously by this pandemic. We have not been untouched 
We have so much loss in our world and our personal lives. In Venezuela, I, three weeks ago, I lost five family members from COVID. And I was wondering, how can I convey um, the struggles of a journalist who is tasked with being an influential person during the time of so many influencers who have millions of people following on social media in where everybody's trying to get more views and likes for their social media posts because it has been challenging. It has been challenging to bring true information to our audience so they can be protected, they can be safe. So the only way I was able to find some answers was going inside, looking at me, looking at the things that I, that I know for sure, looking on how can I influence the people that are next to me, closest to me, and instead of pointing fingers, instead of judging, realizing that the society that we live in is a reflection of us. So the change has to be internal so we can see it externally. So I think that is the only advice, the only words of wisdom that I can give today to truly exercise your influence with the people that you have closest. This year I had to have the most incredible conversations with my loved ones, with the people closest to me, and I was able to see the impact of that influence, but at the smallest level, not because I was on TV. And I think that is the thing that I want to share with you today. And thank you for this immense honor. Thank you. This next Hall of Famer, unfortunately, could not be with us today, but uh, we are so honored to recognize um, Norberto Sanchez, a uh, diversified group operating in food service, um, food distribution, and media, uh, concepts like Frankie's The Steakhouse, Pampas, Luciano's, Frontera Mex Mex Grill, operating Prime Meats, a meat packaging and distribution company that provides meat products to restaurants and grocery stores in the Southeast. And of course, North End Media, uh, based in Charlotte, North Carolina. He has been a giant in our community for years. Norberto Sanchez, thank you so much. We celebrate you and welcome you into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to all of our new inductees who will go down in the Hall of Fame etched in our community for their contributions that will lift and remind generations of their impact. Muchisimas gracias. Let's give them all a round of applause again. Before presenting our 2021 50 most influential Latinos of Georgia, we'd like to recognize the following honorable mention leaders, uh, and they are in your program. I wanna make sure that we celebrate them today. Your notable and honorable mentions, Daniel Acosta, Joel Alvarado, Jose Arturo de la Cruz, Anton Flores Masonet, Myrna Garcia Clemens, Patricia Hernandez, Ivan Lopez, SPO Miguel Lugo, Rosan Petrillo, Pamela Peinado, Jaime Rangel, Analia Raúl, Cynthia Ra Roman, Ana Soler, and Alex Villanueva. Congratulations on this honorable and notable mention. All right. At this time, I'd like to welcome a voice who all are accustomed to hearing, a true champion with a heart to lift and lead our community. Antonio Molina is a veteran, a community leader, an attorney. He has so many accolades behind him, a father of two amazing young girls, and the founder of the 50 Most Influential Latinos. Thank you so much for making this a reality. Antonio, take it away. Thank you, Madam President. I, I got the $100 at the table, so I got you. 
Welcome, everybody. It is so great to see you guys in person again. If you guys remember last year, unfortunately, we had to go digital, but it was still a great program. Being back here at the home of Los Bravos, uh, it's an excellent thing uh, to do and be. Thank you, Los Bravos, for your continued support for everything you guys do. Truest, I mean, we can't do it without you. You guys have been on board with us each and every year. Office Depot. Thank you for being a new partner. We definitely appreciate you. And to each and every sponsor that made today possible, muchas gracias. To the 50, you guys have earned it. You guys are trailblazers. I will tell you, each year it gets harder. Uh, a lot of people don't know how the selection happens, um, and it has been called Antonio's Best Friends by some in the past, but that's not the case. It is a selection committee that gets together every year, and we go through all the different categories and industries, okay? So that's one of the reasons why each year the list looks a little different, right? We have people in business, entertainment, arts, media, sports, nonprofits, government. A little bit of everything is represented, and we try to be very mindful of putting this list every year. So it is definitely something that you guys should be proud of. You guys have earned it. You guys have done the work. This year, even in the middle of a pandemic, we had close to 350 people that were nominated. The selection committee got together, did the painstaking work of getting to this final list, and we are very proud to be able to present the 50 to you today. But before we go into the 50, there is uh, something that I must do, uh, and it must happen, and I think uh, all you guys will be happy that it did. So if I can please get Sulma and Ana Maria uh, and President Maldonado to the stage for a second, please. So my mentor and, and second father, Pedro Marin, always says, honor a quien honor merece. Um, and today we have the distinct honor and pleasure to have a titan among us who after a distinguished and exceptional career, he's shaking his head, giving his all to his state, to the bench, to the legal profession, which I'll continue in a different type of service. Um, he has blazed the trail for many of us. He has been an inspiration, a mentor to hundreds, opening the door for Latinos into the legal profession. So we wanted to do justice by you, Senor Juez. Please help me welcome to the stage, on his last official day as judge, Dax Lopez. I've been crying all day. This is not helping. Um, it, it has been a true pleasure and honor to serve on the bench for the past 11 years. Um, you know, it's hard to get, I always say it's hard to receive an award or recognition for doing something you love and for doing the things that help others. Um, and this is just another example of something that's completely unnecessary, but it, it, it is something that I feel very deeply. Uh, my heart is very full today. Um, my mentor, Tony Del Campo, helped me get to where I am today. I today will be joining him again uh, in private practice. But it's important and incumbent upon all of us. Every leader that's come up here has talked about helping others and who helped them, right? Someone, all of you have helped me get to where I am, where I am today. And it's incumbent upon all of us to help the next generation. So my hope is that the next judge, the next Latina judge, in the history of Georgia is on the stage right now. Um, Ana Maria Martinez has an interview next week for my position um, with the Judicial Nominating Commission. So there is a possibility. 
that we will see the first Latina in the history of Georgia ascend the bench. And we expect great things from her, and I expect great things from all of you. Thank you so much. This has been a true, uh, truly humbling moment for me, uh, and I'll, I'm just going to continue my day of crying alone. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Gracias. Please help me in welcoming to the stage one of our great partners with us again to start this program off and introducing the 50, Miss Melanie Mitchell. Good afternoon. I'd first like to thank the Georgia Hispanic Chamber for all of their work in putting together today's event. Hello, my name is Melanie Mitchell, and I'm the Director of Multicultural Marketing for Truist. We are proud to be the presenting sponsor of this year's 50 Most Influential Latinos in Georgia. The contributions of the 2021 cohort of winners is indeed something to be proud of and an occasion to celebrate. At Truist, our purpose is to inspire and build better lives and communities, and what a way to show our commitment to that purpose by celebrating those who are doing just that. Events like this help us to recognize the unsung heroes in our communities, showcasing the diversity of leadership that makes Georgia a great place to live, work, and play. It's always a pleasure to support events like this alongside our corporate partners, the Braves. Truist salutes all of the 2021 awardees. We look forward to a long-term relationship with the Chamber and celebrating many more influential leaders to come. Let's get to what we've all been waiting for, the announcement of the 2021 Most Influential Latinos of Georgia. As Antonio mentioned, with each passing year and with the growing Latinx Hispanic community of Georgia, selecting the winners gets harder each year. The awards also help elevate the level of work many in the community are doing. As such, for all of those that were nominated this year, hold your head up high. You are amongst the best in the state. As noted earlier, the full bios for all the winners are listed in your program and will be available on the GHCC website after the event. So to kick it off, first on the list is a new arrival to the list, but has been working in the community for many years. She is the host of Latina South and was recognized by the Academy of Interactive and Visual Arts this year with the Communicator of Excellence Award. She has served as a city commissioner part of the board of Galeo, and is the driving force behind the first ever Hispanic Heritage Month celebration between the city of Decatur and Avondale Estates. Please help me in congratulating Adela Yelton. Our next recipient currently serves as the VP of Director of Corporate Partnerships with the Atlanta Gladiators. From sports to transportation, education to small business development, he generously contributes his time and talents to various organizations throughout the state. He currently serves as the interim chair at the Metropolitan Savannah Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. On the board of directors of the Atlanta International, Atlanta International Night Market, on Gwinnett County Public Schools Hispanic Mentoring Priority, to name a few. Please help me in recognizing Albert Sorto. The future is now, and our next recipient is the embodiment of the amazing work the next generation is capable of and already doing. She currently serves on the Next Gen Steering Committee for UNICEF, is a tech-savvy mentor, participates with C5 Georgia, was a nominee for UGA's 40 Under 40, and Atlanta Magazine's Women Making an Impact. She is a branding expert, working with students that want to become entrepreneurs, during the pandemic to help women develop digital skills in order to find employment. Let's give it up for Ana Camila Orego. It's not time to make a change. Just relax, take it easy. Our next recipient does more in one day than most people do in a week. She is the co-founder 
of the Georgia Latino Law Foundation and was the only Latina serving on the state bar of Georgia's Board of Governors. During COVID, she created from scratch a virtual judicial internship program for Georgia law students whose summer internships had been canceled as a result of the pandemic. Hopefully one day soon, we will all be able to call her your honor. Let's give it up for Anna Maria Martinez. Our next recipient is an Emmy award-winning producer, cross-cultural marketer and connector. She has been working in the Atlanta market for over two decades and her insight into the Hispanic market is unmatched. She has been recognized for her leadership by several publications, including Mundo Hispanico, Latina Style Magazine, and most recently featured in Voyage Magazine. Please put your hands together for Andrea Rivera. Our next selectee is an incredible businesswoman, doctor, philanthropist, and community leader. Regardless of the situation, she is always ready to help. During COVID, her assistance to the community never let up. Her latest efforts to support scholarships for our youth and school supplies to our youth have not gone unnoticed. Let's give it up for Dr. Barbara Dominguez. Our next recipient is no stranger to the list and has broken many glass ceilings. Our next nominee was, I believe, the first Latina to run for Congress in Georgia. She currently works in the Gwinnett County District Attorney's Office and is the chairwoman of the Gwinnett County Democratic Party. She is always ready to roll up her sleeves and has inspired thousands of youth when she became the first Latina elected to the Georgia General Assembly. Please put your hands together for Brenda Lopez. Our next recipient is one of Cobb Life Magazine's 20 Under 40, was selected as the Chief of the Year by the Georgia Association of Fire Chiefs, and was appointed to serve as the Georgia State Director for the Southeastern Association of Fire Chiefs. Please help me congratulate Chief Brian Marcos. Our next recipient serves as the first Latina in the 40-year history of the University of, of Georgia Small Business Development Center to be named in the state as a statewide director, and in 2020 received the University of Georgia Public Service and Outreach Award for outstanding performance and service. As a result of her leadership, her team assisted over 600 Hispanic business owners in securing $6.8 million in EIDL and PPP loans in Georgia. She also helped secure $1.2 million in federal and state funding for Hispanic-based organizations that serve the business community in Georgia in 2020. Please help us in congratulating Carolina Ramon. I don't think Carolina is here with us today, but let's give her another round of applause. Our next recipient has been extremely busy during the last year. He currently serves as one of the highest Latinos in the Department of Family and Children's Services and has helped secure funding for a number of organizations throughout the state. In his positions, he also manages the messaging for the organization. Beyond his work with DFACS, he works behind the scenes in ensuring that policy at the state levels help to support our community. Please help me in recognizing Christopher Berlera. Christopher Bispolera is also not here, so let's give him another round of applause. Congratulations to all those selected so far. Here to announce the next 10 recipients, please help me welcome back to the stage the new president and CEO of the GHCC, Veronica Maldonado Torres. <laughs> Thank you. 
During these tough and uncertain times, we've needed the voice of healthcare professionals to inform us, to give us guidance, and none has been more important than that of our next nominee. Our next recipient has been on all national media platforms, has been a guest in many community digital events at the forefront bat of battling COVID in our state. Please help me in congratulating Executive Associate, the Dean's, Dean of School of Medicine of Emory University, Dr. Carlos Del Rio. Our next winner never lets up. She comes to us from the coast of Georgia, along with Suya in the Department of Public Health. She helped to organize vaccination events, provide tens of thousands in financial assistance, and distributed food to many in need. She's also established Migrant Equity Southeast, a nonprofit empowering the refugee community in the Southeast. This year, she becomes the first undocumented person inducted into the municipal archives of the city of Savannah. Please help me in recognizing Daniela Rodriguez. Our next recipients have been spearheading a program to increase graduation rates amongst our youth for over a decade and have been recognized at national levels for their efforts. During the pandemic, they did not waver and actually increase their national presence and footprint with over 66 chapters nationwide. Their efforts have helped students receive over $22 million in scholarships thus far. Please help us in congratulating David and Angela Araya. We have some special guests receiving on their behalf. Well, let's continue with the recognition of our next selectee is a past state representative and the current district attorney for Georgia's Western Circuit, a position she was able to earn after winning a key lawsuit against an unconstitutional law in the state of Georgia. She is also someone that is extremely active in the community and serves on various boards. Let's give it up for the first and only Latina district attorney in the state of Georgia, Deborah Gonzalez. Our next winner has been one of the faces of Hispanic mental health in the state of Georgia. You can see him on Univision, Telemundo, CNN, and CNN en Español talking about recovery, preventing suicide, or the need to have culturally competent healthcare providers. His public service announcement and documentaries addressing underage drinking, suicide, and prescription drugs, drugs have won a combined six Emmy Awards. He is the recipient of the National Latino Psychological Association Star Vega Distinguished Service Award and many other accolades. Please help me in congratulating Dr. Pierre Luigi Mancini. Our next recipient has been a pioneer and has worked behind the scenes at one of Atlanta's biggest media networks. Besides his role as regional vice president for Univision Atlanta, he also serves on numerous boards, including the Ronald McDonald House Charities and the Latino Community Fund of Georgia. Help us in recognizing Eddie Elguizabal. Well, our next recipient is simply one of the best in our community. Through his efforts, billions of dollars have flowed to help countless organizations in Metro Atlanta. He leads one of America's top 20 largest community foundations and has been recognized by numerous organizations. More importantly, he is one of the humblest persons you will ever meet and is always working to improve and elevate our community. Please help us in recognizing Frank Fernandez. Our next recipient has her ears to the community like none other. 
While her work is mostly behind the scenes, she serves and works with many of our grassroots organizations throughout the state. She was recognized as one of the 30 under 30 young professionals of Atlanta and was part of the Institute for Leadership, Leadership Fellows of the Terry College of Business. During COVID, she has been a critical player in ensuring that over 8,500 individuals received a vaccine. Please help me recognize Genesis Castro. Our next selectee is someone who has been doing an incredible job in keeping our state entertained and forms part of one of the hardest hit industries by COVID. When she's not running some of the biggest concerts in our state, she's running her marketing and modeling agency. She is truly as connected as they come in the entertainment industry. And if you ever need a table at the trendiest and hottest nightclub or restaurant, she is the woman to call. Let's give it up for the incredible Gina Sanchez. Our next recipient has been living a life of service. She currently serves on the state of Georgia's personal board and was critical to disseminating information to Georgia's Hispanic businesses. Besides serving as an attorney to numerous national employers and being recognized as a super lawyer, she routinely gives of her time to many nonprofit organizations and mentors the next generation of lawyers. Let's celebrate, although not with us, Ms. Gliani Fagundo. Well, what an amazing group we've recognized thus far. Here to continue with the recognition, please help us welcome our host and longtime partners from the Atlanta Braves, Doretta Rhodes, Executive Vice President and Chief People Capital Officer. Thank you so much, Veronica. We're thankful for our continued partnership with the Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and we are proud to be hosting this momentous event. Congratulations, congratulations to those who are being recognized as one of the year's 50 most influential Latinas in Georgia. You should be proud of the impact you all have in both media, entertainment, sports, nonprofits, and business. Thank you for all the, the magnificent work you do to support the Hispanic community and beyond throughout the Braves country. Now, let's continue our recognition. Our next, our next recipient became the first Latino to serve on the Council of Forest Park in 2020. Since starting, he has made it his mission to increase government transparency, provide quality resources, and constantly look for ways to make Forest Park racially inclusive for all. Aside from being a councilman, he is, bilingual, he is a bilingual educator, an Army veteran. Please help me in congr congratulating Hector Gutierrez. Our next recipient has been putting in the good work over the last five years. She is a steadfast leader with a passion to lift others up, both in, out of, both in and out of the office. She recently launched her own venture and is creating impact as she goes. She serves in various organizations and was recently named to the Gwinnett Place Redevelopment Advisory Committee. Please help us in recognizing Hilda Abbott. When it comes to political influence in our state, especially in the Republican Party, not many come close. He is a former member of the Paulding County School Board and formal councilman for the city of Doralville, where he was raised. He has worked tirelessly beyond the scenes and behind the scenes, and last year became the first Latino Republican Latino Senator in the state of Georgia. Let's give it up for State Senator Jason Anbitardi.
Our next recipient serves as the Chairman of the Board of Education for Atlanta Public Schools. He has been recognized by numerous organizations and was recently named as part of the Outstanding Atlanta Class of 2020. He is involved with numerous nonprofits and is regularly sought after for advice. He also helps to support a lot of our own nonprofits in the state. Please help me in recognizing Jason Estevez. <laughs> Our next recipient is no stranger to the list, and with years of service and dedication to the state is, to the state is amongst the 100 most influential Georgians. He is a regular political commentator on various news outlets and a fervent advocate for the community he loves. Through his role, thousands of individuals have registered to vote, receive leadership training, and have even obtained their U.S. citizenship. Please help us in recognizing Jerry Gonzalez. Our next recipient serves as one of the only 14 presidents in the country and was recently named to chair the ECHL Committee on Inclusion. This year, he was appointed to the planning committee for one of the biggest count counties in our state. He also currently serves on the boards of two prominent Latino nonprofit organizations and has served numerous projects for our community. Please help us in congratulating Jerry James. Our next recipient has been working as a civil servant for over two decades and is a member of the National Guard. During COVID, he has had a huge task to complete and has worked tirelessly in the duties of his office. In 2019, he became the first Latino constitutional officer in Georgia's history and has never shied from his Latino roots. Please put your hands together for our Commissioner of Insurance, John King. Our next recipient makes our list for the first time, but his work and influence in the sport of soccer has been felt for over 13 years. He has been recognized by Atlanta United Football Club as their community MVP and is the assistant coach for Georgia Gwinnett College men's soccer team. He was recognized as the coach of the year by Tony Dungy, John C. Maxwell, and Ernie Johnson. Please help us recognize Coach Jorge Vallejo. Our next winner serves as treasurer for one of the biggest independently owned companies in the country. He's responsible for developing and executing the strategic plan for Inspire Brands Treasury operations, including managing the company's working capital. Prior to this, he served as the director of treasury at the Wendy's Arby's Group, where he also administered the company's Smart Safe program. Please help me in recognizing Jose Panagua. Our next winner can be seen at every event in our community and working with various elected officials throughout the state. He may not be up in front and in the spotlight often, but we see how he works hard behind the scenes to make community initiatives a reality. He is involved with so many organizations, always helping any way he can. Please help us recognize Juan Mejia. Congratulations to all the winners announced so far. It really is a reflection of the level of talent in Georgia's Latino community. Now please help me welcome back to the stage, Veronica Maldano Torres. All right, let's give it up for these last 10 announced. Congratulations. Bueno, this year we've had the pleasure to welcome a new partner to the 50 mil. Office Depot has been an incredible investor in our community, especially during the last year. This summer, we received a grant in partnership with the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Elevate Together, which is an initiative powered by Office Depot to help address systemic discrimination and historical racial disparities in business growth and profitability in black and Hispanic communities. Together, we impacted 19 businesses out of the 130 served through our programs and 
through our Hispanic Business Center, and they received mentoring, consulting, and capacity building, and received collectively together $95,000 thanks to Elevate Together and the Office Devote team. Please help me welcome Adrian Ware, Vice President and General Manager at CompuCom, a division of Office Depot, for the next announcements of the 50 mil. Thank you so much, Veronica. What can we do to help you? It is certainly a privilege for the Office Depot Enterprise family to partner with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and bring to you services, be it aid, education, and access. And so we are certainly proud to be here today and certainly applaud the 50 most influential leaders. With that, I'd like to start with the first leader that I have, which is a um, superwoman in the Latino community. She's an entrepreneur, a certified uh, meditation consultant, a DEI manager of in-flight services for Delta, creator of Hype, recognized as a civic leader, graduated in the 2020 LEAD Atlanta class, and recently became a mom during the midst of the pandemic. So with that, Let's give it up for Juanita Velez. <laughs> Next is a game changer in the community. He's the COO of one of the most impactful state um, associations, Families First. He has helped more than 16,000 people during the midst of the pandemic providing basic necessities. A number of those were in the Hispanic community. They got anything from food to technology. And then he was chosen by the Atlanta Magazine as one of Atlanta's most influential leaders. Please help me in recognizing Julio Carrillo. Julio couldn't be with us today, so let's give him another round of applause. Another titan in the community. This that impact can be felt across the Latino, Hispanic, nonprofit organization sector. This is the go-to guy if you have problems as it relates to travel. He works behind the scenes to support many of the causes and natural disasters. He's a member of the board of Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce in the Southeast. Let's welcome to the stage, Julio Rivera. <laughs> Another powerhouse in the community, this person served and provided support in the Georgia nonprofit area. He is the executive director of 100 Black Men in Atlanta. And oh, by the way, my husband is a 100 Black Men as well. And so he's uh, responsible for bridging the gap between the Black community and the Hispanic community in the area. So let's give it up for Luis Enrique Negron. goes to a game changer in the community. She's the founder and the director of the Women's Business Center at Ace Loans. She was instrumental in providing a bilingual team to su support the community uh, from an Ace perspective. She runs two successful businesses on her own, both a construction company and a um, handcrafted pottery company in North Georgia. She serves as a mentor to other entrepreneurs, leaders, and immigrants. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Maria Vences Peak. Our next recipient has been leading one of the fastest growing nonprofit organizations in the state. She's partnered with government entities, nonprofit organizations, and she promotes companies and business practices in, around the workplace. She has supported over 230 construction companies in Georgia. Please help me in congratulating Marcelia Fuller. Now see if we can top this. Our next winner 
has made an impact and has over 500,000 followers on Facebook. He has been the voice of the voiceless, speaking out against situations that affect the Hispanic community. He reports about breaking news in the state. He helps Latin families that are in need, and he's there at their beck and call. Please help me in congratulating Mario Guevara. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you so much for supporting us and helping us deliver our, our attendees here in our 50 most influential Latinos. Our next winner uh, makes her first appearance on our list. She is the executive director for a nonprofit dedicated to improving educational outcomes for Latin American children. In 2020, she was the recipient of the Inspiration Awards by the LEA. In May 21, 2020 was declared in her name by the Fulton County Commissioners and was part of the 2020 Atlanta Business Chronicle, Women Who Mean Business. Please help me congratulate Maritza Morelli. And Maritza is not with us today, but we celebrate her. Thank you so much. Our next 50 most influential Latino is the area manager for the Georgia Power and works with local, regional, and state leaders to advance and implement operational, economic, community, and charitable strategies. Prior to her position as area manager, she worked as assistant to the Georgia Power Senior Vice President of Charitable Giving and President and CEO of the Georgia Power Foundation. Fernandez helped to lead charitable giving, volunteerism, and community relation efforts across the state of Georgia. She is also the current chair of the Latin American Association. Please help us in recognizing Misty Fernandez. And I'm not sure if Misty is with us today. So we want to congratulate her and thank her so much for her service and welcome her into the 50 Most Influential. Our next winner is the Multicultural Program Director of CFVC and has been instrumental in leading efforts that help our community identify, prevent, and seek help from domestic violence. Norma helps immigrant victims of domestic violence have access to linguistically and culturally appropriate services through the bilingual statewide domestic violence hotline that she oversees. Please help us congratulate from Cherokee County, Norma Mendoza. <laughs> Next up, battling cleanup and bringing us home is the founder of the 50 Most Influential of Latinos and our board chair. Please help me welcome back Antonio Molina. Uh, again, congratulations to everybody that's been named thus far. We have an excellent list. I told you it was a tough task. I'm sure as you're reading these bios, you realize why it's so difficult each year to select the 50. But congratulations to all that have been selected thus far. Our next nominee comes from Gwinnett County. She is a woman that is very active in education. She is a fierce fighter, someone that never backs down and makes sure that she represents all the students in Gwinnett County, but more importantly, the students within the Hispanic Mentoring Program. Please help us congratulate Ms. Nuri Castillo Crawford. Our next recipient is no stranger to the list. He has done so much and still remains one of the only owners of a movie studio. While he cannot be here with us today, we congratulate and we thank Ozzy Areu for being a trailblazer and part of the 50 most influential Latinos. Our next recipient, we don't have to look very far. He's actually always behind the scenes, behind a camera, bringing us the latest news looking out for the community. He is the editor-in-chief of El Nuevo Georgia, so he's gonna have to pause his camera for a second while he comes up to receive his award, Rafael Navarro. <laughs> Our next 
Our next selectee serves as the Chief Financial Officer for Latin American Operations of Kimberly Clark. He is responsible for leading the finance operations and strategy development for Latin America and directing the portfolio, which includes brands such as Huggies, Kotex, Intimus, Depend, Plenitude, Kleenex, and Scott. Not to mention, he is very involved in that community, although most of the time you will see him behind the scenes. Please give a warm welcome to Roberto Moraes. Our next winner, although he's not with us here today, his presence is felt everywhere. He is involved to the T, not only here in the state of Georgia, but nationally. Uh, he is someone that really wears his heart on his sleeve and contributes to the community at every step of the way. Here to the, receive the award on his behalf, Ronnie Cruz for Don Ruben Cruz. Our next winner is the executive director of the Atlanta Fire Rescue Foundation. Some of her recognitions include the Georgia Center for Nonprofits 30 Under 30, Georgia Trends 40 Under 40, part of LEAD class in 2017, my fellow outstanding Atlanta class of 2020, you know. Um, thank you. Somebody could have clapped for that, I'm just saying. I feel a little hurt. She's been featured and has received all kind of recognitions and awards. Please help us welcome Shirley Ann Smith. Our next selectee embodies the future of our state. She is truly a connector. Her passion for building equity and inclusion is refreshing. And among her many pa uh, projects and passions, Includes the Sarah J. Gonzalez Park, the Atlanta Jewish Committee, HYPE, the GHCC, Catholic Charities, and that's just to name a few. Please help us welcome Sophia Bork. <laughs> Our next winner can be seen as an anchor on Channel 2 Action News at 4. She is an Emmy Award winning journalist and has hosted numerous special events broadcasting from sports to philanthropic galas, finding joy in everything that she does and making sure that she represents the community. She is one of the founding members of the Cristo Rey uh, Foundation as well, if I'm not mistaken. More importantly to me, and especially since next month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, why I was wearing the real men wear pink mask, please help us and welcome a warrior, a queen, Ms. Wendy Corona. All right, our next selectee has made a name for herself. As a documented business owner, she puts her passion, skill, and devotion to highlight the lives of others through her art. Her work can be seen and enjoyed while driving throughout the streets of Atlanta at the High Museum and other great places, including Mercedes-Benz Home Depot Backyard. Please help us in welcoming Yemi Cameron. <laughs> and we saved the best for last. We surely did. No, I'm just kidding. No, but she is amazing. <laughs> the next nominee has really made her name for herself under the Gold Dome. As a freshman legislator, she got right to work, creating coalitions and support for various pieces of legislation. She is currently Georgia's only Latina elected official at the Georgia General Assembly. But not only that, she runs a successful law firm and business for a living. Um, and it's just an all-around incredible human being. Thank you for everything that you do. Representative Sulma Lopez. Awesome. Definitely want to thank everybody for being here today. 
Truist, our presenting sponsor. Thank you. <laughs> to all of our sponsors here today, thank you. Now, I do want to make sure you guys are aware we have more excellent programming coming up and events, all right? So please look out. October 11th, we're hosting our first ever Gladiator Classic. That's right. So for all our golfers out there. Our business expo that is going to be taking place at the Delta Flight Museum. Delta, thank you again for always being a phenomenal partner of the chamber. We love you. We appreciate you. And I know y'all miss dancing, okay? And we are praying. We really are praying. I mean, I'm praying. December 4th, Rising of the Phoenix, the Georgia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Gala. We are hoping to be in person at Flourish, dancing the night away. So put that on your calendars, December 4th. And Mr. Rodney, it is an honor to have you here. Rodney Buller from the Chick-fil-A Foundation is actually our chairman of the gala this year. So y'all already know it's going to be on and popping. I want to thank the team. Where's the team? Where's our entire GHC team? All right, y'all don't know this. Where are they at? Norma, Ish, Edward, Veronica, Juanita, the dean of the chamber. Where is Juanita? Fabiola. Fabiola. The entire team. Y'all, you don't know. They were working. They were working till two o'clock in the morning to help put this together, y'all. We really can't do anything without their support, their love. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you again, Commissioner. Thank you for being here. Chandra from John Ossoff's office, thank you for being here. All of our elected officials, we appreciate you. We love y'all. Have a great afternoon.